I'm Rolene Marks. This is the Israel Brief, where you guys join me for a date every Monday to Thursday, where I bring you those top stories making headlines in Israel. As always, we are brought to you by lay of the land and occasionally by my neighbor's barking dog. Now, yesterday I told you guys that I would not be in studio, that I would be on the northern border uh, with Lebanon. I would have been a part of a press tour going up there with the government press office. However, this morning I woke up full of flu, my throat is sore, my, my head is sore, and I didn't think it wise to go all the way up north. Also, given that uh, it is pouring with rain, the weather is really, really miserable, so I thought I'd stay indoors, and that also gives me an opportunity to make sure I speak to you guys. So let's take a look at those top stories. We are on day 165 of Israel's war with Hamas. I can't believe we are almost nearing that six-month mark. During these last now nearly six months, President Biden has spoken to Prime Minister Netanyahu a number of times. There are some estimates that it's about 20 times. We can't forget that uh, immediately after the atrocities of the 7th of October, President Biden came here to Israel. Uh, he stood shoulder to shoulder in an expression of solidarity with the Israeli people. But over the last couple of weeks, there has been some tension brewing between Israel and the United States. And yesterday, the two leaders spoke for the first time in a month. So what we know from the conversation is that they address the issue of a proposed Israeli incursion into Rafah. Rafah is the last real main stronghold of Hamas. There are still Hamas battalions inside Rafah. And Prime Minister Netanyahu says in order for Israel to, to win this war, we need to, to go after those last remaining battalions. The president is not entirely happy with this. He says that while he absolutely supports Israel's right to go after Hamas, there are huge concerns about what a widespread incursion into Gaza could mean for civilians on the ground. In order to try and make uh, some kind of, uh, or meet each other halfway, uh, the team, an Israeli team will be dispatched to the United States to look at ways for Israel to deal with the threat posed by Rafah. We also can't forget that Israel managed to rescue two hostages that are troops located inside Rafah. So uh, there obviously is some reason why we are so focused on, on that area. Um, we definitely don't have all the intel or whatever uh, the army um, knows that is made public, but there is obviously a reason why we are concentrating on Rafah. So the, the two teams will look at the best ways to uh, come up for the best plan for Rafah. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan has said that there are other ways to deal with the threat other than going on a full-scale ground incursion, which also means uh, a high level of um, casualties for Israeli soldiers as well. So let's see what the, the, the teams come up with. In the meantime, the two leaders also spoke about the growing concern the humanitarian crisis on the ground in Gaza and the need to, to move towards a ceasefire of a couple of weeks that would allow uh, for the release of the hostages and for uh, the enablement of more aid to be allowed into the Gaza Strip. And just to reiterate, and I keep saying it again and again, and I'll probably say it a little bit later in this broadcast as well, there is no cap to the amount of aid Israel is letting into the Gaza Strip. A very, very important fact, especially seeing that there is a lot of media hype, a lot of attention around the issue of humanitarian aid. Yesterday, we spoke a little bit about Israel's actions on the ground in Al-Shifa Hospital. If we go back a couple of weeks, we remember that it was in Al-Shifa Hospital. We found those tunnels, uh, weapons, and proof that hostages had been brought 
on the 7th of October into uh, the hospital effect confirmed by released hostage Judith Ra'anan in an interview with Elizabeth Vargas for Newsmax. Um, so yesterday the IDF released their reasons for going into Shifa Hospital. Uh, they said that Hamas had set up a, a command centre Troops found vast amounts of money and weapons and uh, in the clashes in which a significant amount of Hamas terrorists were eliminated and others were arrested and taken for interrogation by Unit 504. The Internal Security Commander for Hamas, Fakh Mabu, yes, that's his real name, Fakh Mabu, was killed. I would say he's pretty fucked now, isn't he? Now moving on to the issue of aid. The United Nations, the EU Chief Joseph Borrell have been uh, really, really castigating Israel, accusing Israel of creating a famine situation, of, cre of uh, weaponizing starvation and, and restricting aid in Gaza. However, we have an entirely different um, explanation coming from COGET, that is the unit that deals only with humanitarian aid. And as we know, we are seeing those airdrops of, of aid, we are seeing those um, uh, aid trucks going in, and the ships are starting to, to come in with humanitarian aid. So it's coming in by land, by sea, and by air. And as Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, the chief spokesperson for the IDF, said last week, we will flood Gaza with aid. Our war is not with the people of Gaza, it is with Hamas. So what is very interesting is Kogat tweeting out earlier today that yesterday 222 aid trucks were inspected. About 66% of them had food and medicine and that kind of aid and the rest of them all had equipment to provide much needed shelter. 158 of those trucks were distributed within the Gaza Strip and only 86 of them, that's less than half, were distributed by UN aid workers. Now they posed the question to Philippe Lazzarini, the head of UNRWA, the United Nations Relief Works Agency responsible for the distribution of aid and to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Like, what, what, what is going on with this? The bottleneck is not from Israel's side. The bottleneck is inside the Gaza Strip, the distribution of aid. So at some stage, the United Nations has to take responsibility. But we do know that all of this is part of Hamas's strategy to say to the world, look at what Israel's doing to civilians in Gaza. They are starving the people of Gaza. But the holdup is not on Israel's side. And I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. There is no cap to the amount of humanitarian aid Israel is sending in to the Gaza Strip. Our big concern here in Israel are our hostages. There are 134 uh, hostages that remain inside the Gaza Strip. We know now that 35 of them are, are the remains, are, are the bodies of, of hostages. And we have uh, heard in the recent hours that David Barnea, the Mossad chief, has left Qatar. However, the Israeli delegation will remain there and negotiations, uh, indirect negotiations with Hamas are expected to take about a fortnight. Meanwhile, we have heard from Shiri Al-Bag. She is the mother of hostage Liri Al-Bag, who has said that according to eyewitnesses who were held with her daughter, her daughter was made to uh, do domestic kind of work, cooking, cleaning, looking after children, but banned from eating the food that she is cooking. And she also said when asked about the situation for Israeli women and girls, being held hostage, she said she, she really prefers not to, to think about it because it's, it's just it's too overwhelming what those girls are enduring. And uh, we keep on saying, and we're going to say it again, bring them home now. 
Those are your top stories making headlines. Don't forget to check out our website at www.layoftheland.online. Our YouTube channel is at The Israel Brief. Our Facebook community is at Lottel site. We're on Exit Lay of the Land 5. Guys, like, share, subscribe. Get us out to the world as much as possible. And uh, I am now going to take a little something for my flu. So I love you and I leave you. Take care of yourselves and each other and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.